What is going on everyone? Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a fun topic, which is uh, I got a message yesterday from somebody who said, uh, you know, who's dead broke and was like, what do I do? All that kind of stuff. And so um, I think I've talked in the past, I'll probably do another one about when, I, when I've lost everything, um, what I did step by step um, to, I think the, the, after I lost everything the next month, I did $110,000 in sales. Um, and that, sorry, not sales, that was cash collected in the next, in the next 30 days. So like you absolutely just need skills. You can have nothing else in your life. And a beautiful thing is that no government can take it from you. No person can take your skills from you in a divorce. Um, those are always your own, uh, which is something that, I don't know, for some reason feels magical to me. And so one of the things that I've seen as I've kind of, you know, moved, moved up, I'm not saying that arrogantly, just, you know, just developed, progressed, whatever, um, is that the people who I surround myself with now have more money than the people that I surrounded myself when I was early on in my career. And what's ironic is that these people actually spend less money. <laughs> they, they, have, they have less desire to spend money and they find ways to acquire things for less money out of pocket. And um, that's always really interesting to me. And so right now, I think there's, you know, if you were to, if you were to look at quote investment opportunities, right? Um, you could, you could, you know, invest in buying a house. So let's say, let's say you've got, um, I'll do two scenarios. All right. Let's say you've got $50,000. All right. And you're like, okay, I'm thinking about buying uh, a house. Right. And I think for a first house, you might only have to put 10% down. I'm not sure it's 10 or 20. Yeah. I don't remember. But anyways, let's just say 10 for, for sake of whatever. So $500,000 house. All right. You put 10% down and then you get the mortgage, right? You get the liability of the mortgage payment every month. Yippee. Um, now, if you were to, if you were to, and let's say that in order for you to save that, you've been making, I don't know, 60 grand a year and you've been saving that for, you know, five years, something like that. Now, let's look at an alternative scenario where you um, are still making that same amount of money, 60, and you saved up 50. And instead of buying a house, you have a long conversation with your spouse and you say, or maybe you don't have a spouse, whatever, with yourself. And you say, I wonder how much money I could get for this money. Ah, interesting, right? And so you, you, you leaf through the businesses that are in your area. And by the way, um, the best way to do that is one, you should contact brokers, not necessarily to buy a business, but to get an idea of some of the businesses that are in the area and what price ranges look like. But if you buy from a broker, you're going to pay retail. You could definitely negotiate a deal. And I'll tell you one of the deals that I did that was really good at the end of this. Um, but uh, anyways, so let's say you, you, know, you, you reach out to some businesses, things that you like or enjoy or feel like you have some specialized knowledge in. And uh, you find out that there's a business that's doing, let's say, I don't know, $250,000 a year in, uh, in, in profit, right? And uh, because it's a small local loan business and you're not gonna pay retail for it, you get it for two and a half you know, times earnings, right? Which would be, uh, what's two and a half times? Uh, it's 525, hopefully, I think. Two and a half, no, that's 625, excuse me. $625,000 is what a business, you might pay for businesses doing $250,000 a year in profit, all right? Now here's where it, here's where it's interesting, right? So I had um, an early mentor who who taught me this negotiation tactic that I've used pretty much for throughout my entire life since this moment, and I, and I used it in the deal that I'll tell you about in a second, which is agree on price then agree on terms, right? And so when you when you would go to quote talk to this business, right? There's there's the price which you might say cool, you know this business six twenty five, and then there's terms, right? And so the term side once you've agreed on the price you negotiate down whatever. And then you say, okay, well, I'm going to need you to sell or finance, meaning you're not going to pay anything you're going to pay them over time, right? I need you to sell or finance, uh, you know, three quarters of the deal, all right? And so three quarters of the deal, man, I'm doing some math today, but like 400 and, you know, 30-ish, 437, whatever, $1,000. Um, and you're going to finance that for, you know, three years, right? And then on top of that, or five years, you know, you can do whatever you want here. I think, um, I mean, you could probably, I mean, you try and push it out as far as you can, right? And then what you have remaining, which would be like, in this instance, $200,000, then you get a note from the bank, right, or SBA loan, which you have a $200,000 um, loan for, and you put your, your $50,000 down, right? So then that would be 
200, uh, so you put 50, which would be 25% of 200,000. So I'm gonna recap this. 625 is the cost of the business. You know, 437, you get seller finance, meaning you can pay that over time. And then you've got $200,000 that you get a loan from the bank. So, uh, which you put $50,000 for. So if you're thinking about this, the guy who's selling the business, he sells for 625, but he's only getting 200,000 up front. You're only putting 50 of that 200 and you're taking a loan for the rest of it, right? Um, and so when you're looking at this, you've now acquired this business that makes $250,000 a year, right? So you upgraded your income from 60 to 250,000, right? And within, you know, 24 months, all of that, you know, income will be yours. Uh, and maybe hopefully you'll grow it or you'll probably try and work extra hard and take over some of the, some of the other positions or cut out some of the waste, et cetera, in the business. And, uh, and, and so that massively speeds you up in life, right? And if you compare that to what it would cost you to start your own business um, in terms of investment and like existing book of business, client lists, all the knickknacks you have to buy that you don't even think of, zoning permits and all the fees and licenses, um, it's actually a pretty decent deal. So um, I'll tell you one of the deals that I did that was pretty good. So I had four locations at this point. This is when I had the gyms. And I opened a fifth location. So the first two locations I opened, I opened the first one I think for $40,000. I mean, I, I, put, I, didn't, I put as little as I possibly could in this thing. Um, and it happened to have been an old gym. So there was like turf already in, the flooring was already in, it was painted. Like there was a bunch of things I didn't have to pay for. So I lucked out there. Um, and, but the second one, because I thought I was smarter, I put 200, we put 250,000 into the second location. And here's the fun thing. It made no more money than the first location did, uh, which I always think is hilarious. So like, uh, to the undisciplined, everything looks like a spending opportunity. Uh, and so <laughs> I pretty much would empty my bank account. And, uh, and so on my fifth location, uh, my next two locations were corporate locations, which were actually pretty cheap. Um, which are pretty cool. Those are, those are good deals. But the, the, the fifth location that I did, I had a gym that went out of business or he, not out of business. He wanted to uproot because he got divorced or he had some, some family crisis. And so he was looking for someone to buy his, his, his gym. And so it was beautiful. It had all this equipment that was really expensive in it. And I was like, man, this is like a dream come true. And so I agreed on price because I had my mentor talk me through this. I agreed on price, which I think was 40,000. I think it was 40 grand. It was 40 or 50. I think it was, yeah. So that's what I agreed. And then I was like, cool, I'll pay you over the next year. And he was like, fair enough. And so, I mean, he didn't say it like that. We negotiated and then 12 months is what we, what we came to. And so, I mean, I tried to go for 24 months, <laughs> uh, but he agreed on 12. And so the beautiful thing with that was I didn't, I didn't put any money out of pocket. So, you know, my first gym, I put 50 grand in. Second gym, I put $250,000 in. Fifth gym, smarter, more experienced me, puts no money in. Right, and in the first 30 days, we did 51,000 in sales. So this gym, in the first 30 days, literally paid for itself. Period. Right, and so this thing is now kicking off profit, right, every month during this during this whole period of time. And then 12 months later, I ended up meeting Russell and telling him how I was doing this stuff, and he's like, "You should be teaching other people how to do what you're doing now." And so I ended up selling the gym for one and a half times more than I quote bought it for, right which I then had the gym pay for it on its own. And so I basically acquired a cash flowing asset for nothing and then had a, just acquired a cash flowing asset for, for, for no money. And so I think about that um, in light of the original thing that I, I mentioned was just like, I get, I get people who message me all the time, like what, if, what happens if I don't have any money? I don't know what to do. You always have to just get skills, or this is just my opinion, is that because there's no one who can take them from you, there's no divorce, there's no government, there's no revolution, there's no financial crisis that can ever take your skills from you. And that's why when entrepreneurs hit zero, they can usually bounce back. I've done it. I had $1,100 in my bank account um, at one point at, at, my, at my lowest point after I had six gyms, right? Um, after this. So even when I had this experience, and it sounds cool, like I messed up. And, um, you know, that's why I think I love the saying, you only you should only have to get rich once. And, um, and that's why people who are wealthy are more risk averse because the downside risk of losing everything is always bigger, right? Like you can reverse 30 years of great decisions with any number multiplied by zero. Any number multiplied by zero. You could have a billion dollars if you make a bad investment, it goes to zero, right? And so that's why when people are like, I don't know why you're motivated and I don't know why 
there, like it's just there's there's just always things that can happen. You know what I mean? And so just being risk averse is what I have noticed from the people who have the most money, is that they actually have way lower risk tolerances than the people who have no money, uh, which is hilarious because it's like the people who have the least amount of money uh, then go buy lottery tickets, which are literally the worst investment you could possibly make. Um, and 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 they, they consistently invest their money in a terrible investment that has all the downside risk of going to zero. Whereas the richest people in the world find things that could never go to zero and they buy them for zero. So think about that for a second. People are using their money, poor people use their money to buy things that have virtually guaranteed you know, risk of going to zero, right? With tiny risk of, of upside, right? Whereas rich people buy stuff for zero dollars that have um, upside potential, but that doesn't, that doesn't have a billion dollar upside potential. They would rather have a guaranteed small return with no risk than a potential for huge return with guaranteed risk. Think about that. So um, anywho, I think if it, over time, and it's not like you can shift your perspective on this overnight. It took me a long time and I still am doing it now um, in shifting how, like, cause I still get excited about, you know, I see these, you know, these, these, these cryptocurrencies 20 Xing and stuff, you know, in like a month. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. Um, but then I also think like, well, the downside risk of me going to zero is far more upsetting to me than me getting 20 times more on some tiny investment that I would make. Um, and so I, I don't do it. Right. And so anyways, um, I say all this to say, uh, agree on price, agree on terms, try and get something for nothing. See if you're gonna if you're gonna make an investment in any kind, or you're trying to start a business. There's usually a business that's already for sale, or has a motivated seller, an owner who doesn't want to do it anymore, who will almost give it to you for free, right? And that's the thing is when you're new, you're getting so excited, but you're not patient, right? That's why you have to have the character traits of being successful before you will see the success. Because if you if you have that character trait, you'll look and you'll say, I can take six months because in the in the decade of my in the next decade of my life, there's no rush. But me making a good deal or a bad deal of like, should I put all my investment in this thing or should I be able to get something that makes four times more money for free? You can do that. You can do that. And I'm telling you, I talk to business owners every day. I mean, guys making a million, two million, four million dollars a year who literally have told me, they're like, dude, if someone came today and offered me, like guys who are making a million dollars, a million dollars a year in profit. Like if someone had offered me 200 grand right now, I would take it. I just am so tired of this business. So like there are opportunities. They're just not listed anywhere. You just got to look for them. Right. Um, and that's the thing. No one will do it because it's work. So, but the good news is that if you have a little bit of work ethic, you can make a tremendous amount of money, um, with very little risk and do it the way, um, the rich people that I know do it. So otherwise have an amazing day. Keep being awesome. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.